Cross Beats Production What's going on here with Nate to Wait and this is Cross Beats Production. So I want to share a quick tip with you guys. Um, I'm going to have that follow up of those videos for the mixing videos, but I want to share another quick tip with you because you know how I like doing that. So this tip is about how to get your kick uh, more snappy and to fit in closer and tighter with your bass. Um, I don't have a bass that I'm going to show you, but I have a kick that I want to show you and how to get this and achieve the, uh, the, more, the, the correct tightness with your bass. So what I'm going to show you guys is two plugins. So both of them you guys can access. One is a Studio One plugin and the other one is called Bittersweet, which is a transient designer. And the reason why these two work really well together and both of them are you guys can use for free. So if you download uh, Bittersweet, which you'll find on online, just type in Flux Audio and then Bittersweet and you guys can find that. Um, the other plugin that I've got here is a PreSonus, and I'll just quickly show you um, where it is. So it's right at the bottom here. It's called Xtrem, and it's basically basically like a rhythm gate. Most times, it's kind of used as a gate or a LFO. Um, but the reason why I'm using it on a kick is to shorten the actual kick's sustain. So the kick here, I'll just show you the original kick, and I'll show you what it's actually done to adapt to uh, the beat. So normally when you guys are working on a kick and a bass line. Normally you want to have um, so some coherence between the two, so they should have their own space inside the frequency spectrum and fill that space. And usually you'll get masking issues or you'll have too much low end frequency or not enough or whatever the case is. Um, if you don't have correct alignment with one, you know, your kick and your bass. Um, also phase might affect things like that as well, but I'll address that on another video. But um, when I see most people use a kick, um, the thing I find that happens a lot with electronic producers is, my cat's just making some noise back there, um, electronic producers is basically they have um, the kick being a little bit too long. So the sustain that you can see here, this is the original kick, and I'll play these to you in just a second, but the original kick here, you can see the sustain goes for quite some time, and it's longer than the actual uh, kick really needs to be in this track. Um, and what I've done here is I've addressed the attack and the sustain as well. So I've created um, an attack and sustain really close and tight for that kick. And that's what I want it to, to sound like. So let me just solo the kick. I'll just mute this one so I don't interfere with anything. And uh, we'll listen to the kick and see what it sounds like. So let's go with that and go through the kick. All right, cool. So you can hear that the kick's got some rhythm. Uh, it basically has this little bit of a... A noise here as well and that's to create that that kind of groove in the beat and what it originally sounded like was I'll just unmute this one and we'll just mute this one so we can get that soloed and we'll solo that and go from there so listen to the original okay actually what I might do is just unmute this and we'll just go between the two so we'll go shortened and then original All right, so on their own, isolated, it doesn't really matter because, I mean, they both sound good. It's not a problem. But what happens is when you get it in with a bass instrument, and especially if your bass is, you know, having a long sustain and stuff like that, um, you get the issue with masking or overload of, uh, you know, low end frequencies and stuff like that. So what I want to show you is just the kick with the bass. So between the two, we'll just play the bass with the shortened version. Um, actually, I'll go the long version first, the standard version, and then the shortened version after that. So... Let's go. Now you can hear it's a little bit tighter now because the low end frequencies that are on the kick get cut off really quickly. So it's only allowing the, you know, the transient to go through. So that snap of the kick goes straight through and then it cuts it as fast as it needs to, to get out of the way and allow the bass to continue breathing. Now you could also add, you know, a side chain compression where you duck the, the bass out of the way every time that kick hits. 
Um, but you know, it's better to get your kick in line with one, the, the grid pattern. So you can see here, I've only got two sections of the grid actually taken up on this particular kick that I've got here. Uh, but this one continues for almost the entire length until the next sort of little kick happens again. So it doesn't really sound like there's much um, much going on. As far as movement, it doesn't really have a whole lot of movement because it's just sustained the whole way through. Um, it still has transient, so obviously it sounds like a kick, but you know what I'm saying, like it's extended the entire time, so it doesn't let the bass breathe. And that's what you want really to happen in your track. So I just thought I'd address that and show you guys a trick to do it. So let's get into the, the mixing side of it, how I did this and what I did to achieve it. So there's two plugins, like I said. So Extreme is the, well, I guess it's Xtrem. Um, it's basically like a tremolator, or you can use it for modulating from with an LFO in that kind of guard, regard. Um, you can set it up to be triang triangle, sine, uh, sawtooth, and all the rest. Um, these are really handy if you want to use uh, like a sidechain type of thing as well to get movement out of another instrument, like it could be a bass or a piano or whatever. Um, you can use that. But what I've done here is I put it on 16 step and if I could expand it, I would, I'll bring it closer to you guys so you can see what's going on. But I've, I've left the first couple of steps here so that the LFO doesn't cut it off until about here. And then I've dipped it down and then basically removed everything from there. So you can see it's on one fourth. So the, the beats per bar one fourth and I've set it to sync. So it syncs that, so it's not going crazy. So you sync it and then every time you play it, you'll see what happens here. So let's just play it on the solo kick. And without it, and with it, all right, cool. So you guys can hear that. I'm sure you could probably hear it if you're listening on headphones that will display the low end a lot more accurately. Um, but the other thing I'm using here is Bittersweet, which what I've done here is increase the transient, which is on Bitter. Um, it pushes the transient up, and I've reduced the milliseconds down to 20. That's as fast as it can go as far as period. And um, the, you know, the game reduction, I've left it on stereo and I've left the game reduction to auto and it links it. So basically what it's doing, and as you guys can see, it's kind of increasing the transient slightly with the kick just at the start here. So I get a bit more of a transient at the start and then it cuts it off really quickly. So it makes the kick have more of an attack and it controls the low end frequency at the end with the sustain. So it's reducing the sustain. So hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. If you don't, hit me up in the comments. But I thought this is a fantastic, um, you know, tutorial to show you guys because there are plugins that you can use, and I'll just show you the one that I would normally um, recommend if you have the money to buy it. Um, it's this LFO tool, which I think is fantastic. I don't actually have it yet. I've still demoed it. Um, there is a trick that you can do as well if you want to use this plugin and uh, not have to pay for it immediately, at least uh, in the short term. And what I've done here, I'll just show you, um, you reduce the, the sustain of the kick. Basically, you could cut it off like this. You could do it as short as you want, whatever. Um, and then you can bounce the audio through the mix down. So if you go into mix down selection here, hit mix down selection, and you'll see it bounces it out. What it's doing is going straight through the plugin, and it's allowing you to bounce the kick out. So as you can see here, it's shortened down my kick, and it's left uh, a lot of um, room for the bass to breathe as well. And, you know, like you can see on the original, it's removed a lot of the sustain out of that. So that's one other option you've got to set the LFO tool here by using that. Uh, th these tools are fantastic. I mean, I I'm probably going to purchase this very, very shortly. I just need to get the funds together to do it. Um, like I said, I think it's like $40. I'm just waiting for it to go on sale. So I'll leave that on the next one. So if you guys like this, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. As always, I really appreciate you guys. And... Uh, Peace out.